So good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here so early. Uh, I feel for you guys. Uh, I, I certainly had a hard time waking up this morning. So thank you for being here with us. I will keep my part fairly short. Uh, I will just give you some views as to what DDN is doing in the HPC space and the evolution of HPC as a market. Like Addison was saying, this is a fairly important market which large storage companies are not really focused on. Uh, it has always been the core of what we do as a company and as an organization. Uh, so DDN started out in the late 90s, in 98, focused initially on the HPC market, and 16 years later, we are still focused on the market, and we're focused on serving the needs of customers who have HPC use cases. Now, over the years, this market has broadened and expanded and changed, uh, and we have grown with it. So we're very grateful for our customers, uh, whether it's government labs, government agencies, academia, universities, and lately enterprise organizations who have use cases and challenges that they're faced with which have to do with HPC. Now, what is our mission? What is it that we're focused on doing? Uh, and, and this is a slight evolution from what DDN has been doing in the past. In the past, our focus was in enabling two primary elements in our HPC customers, data centers, and in their IT infrastructures. And those two elements were, number one, performance. And performance traditionally was a bandwidth metric. And the second one was capacity. So it was how do we deliver the best performance and the best capacity to help our HPC customers use their applications and manage their workflows in the most efficient way. Well, that has broadened and our focus has broadened. And the reason why uh, this broadening of the focus is taking place is that applications are becoming more and more complex, more and more demanding in terms of the performance requirements and the capacity requirements that they have. That's number one. Number two, we're finding that organizations are throwing a much broader range of applications into their IT environments. So what used to be a bandwidth requirement for performance has now become a combination of bandwidth and IOPS. So you have to optimize across those two dimensions. And number three, collaboration and the distribution of content has become increasingly important. This is something that we didn't really see six, seven years ago, today many, many organizations and many agencies who have to deal with HPC workflows have to deal with it in the context of a distributed environment. So, so what does that mean? It means, number one, optimization of efficiency in the data center along those two metrics of performance, so bandwidth and capacity. Latency is becoming very important, both inside the data center with some of the innovation that is taking place with fast interconnects, as well as across multiple data centers. And then you still need to continue to optimize in the dimensions of capacity, power, and footprint. So the data center and efficiency in the data center is becoming more important in a more complex way. Number two is the notion of collaboration and the distribution of content. We're seeing that in academia, certainly. Campus-wide collaboration, the ability to share content across a large number of researchers or a large number of students, but we're also seeing it in the enterprise. Enterprise customers with HPC use cases, whether it's in financial services, where there's a need to do financial model optimization across various locations in order to enhance the ability to trade and deliver better returns for their investors, or whether it's oil and gas with 4D models and the ability to do a finer modeling and extract more oil or more gas out of a given reservoir, or manufacturing with simulation. Collaboration across multiple locations and multiple data centers is another metric which is becoming extremely important. And in, in order to be able to achieve that for our customers, we're finding that the underlying media that is serving this collaboration has also evolved. So the mix of the type of solid state memory and the type of spinning disk that needs to be in these distributed environment in order to achieve the optimization has also become more complex. So more complexity in bandwidth, more complexity in the types of media. 
And, and then finally, the ability to accelerate existing IT infrastructures and integrate easily into them is something that is a fundamental challenge for the enterprise as they are experiencing these HPC use cases, but they also have to deal with the legacy of what is in their environments. So this is just you know, a roadmap of DDN, some of the things we've done. Um, as, as we were discussing, our focus is really front and center in the HPC space. So we continue uh, to be a trusted advisor and a trusted supplier and partner to our customers in HPC. And irrespective of the metric you look at, top 10, top 50, top 100, top 500, our customers continue to trust us with their HPC needs. And from an innovation perspective, I mean, two really interesting things uh, that customers have adopted. Number one is our WAS technology, which is an object-based technology which gives our customers a number of things. One, the ability to collaborate across multiple locations. We have some customers who are doing this at very large scale. And two, it's the ability to tie a high-performance tier, which resides in the data center, with an archival tier, which is live and is extremely cost-effective. So that's one set of technologies. The other set of technologies is our SFA product portfolio, which ties into file systems, which are very, very critical for organizations. And some of the things that we've done recently, which we have announced and we will be announcing throughout 2014, to the optimization for Lustre, GPFS, combination of Lustre and GPFS, and then the tying to object-based technology. Uh, commitments to HPC also means putting your dollars where your mouth is, and that ties into Exascale. Uh, the future of HPC is in Exascale. Exascale is a great thing because it is driving innovation, which results in benefits to the overall community. So Exascale is not just for you know, five or ten organizations in the world who will deploy Exascale systems in the next five, six years or so. It fosters and accelerates innovation, which can then be applied into the broader HPC community. And that's academia, it's enterprise customers, and so on. So we're very glad to be investing very heavily into innovation for Exascale. And we're already starting to see the benefits of that for the broader community in HPC. Uh, product portfolio, and I won't talk too much about that. You know, Robert will get into the details of that. Three essential pillars which constitute our portfolio. The first one is our platforms, the SFA technology, which is basically a means to accelerate content, and that's ingest processing and distribution of content with a combination of solid state and spinning disk. Very, very important. Then the ability to embed file systems in order to reduce the latencies associated with that. And doing so with a combination of storage bricks and processor bricks. Uh, the second piece is the file systems, which again, uh, in HPC is clearly critical. And file systems historically have been the key element in the deployments for HPC. Today we're finding increasingly customers who are tying file systems into object-based technologies. And then the third layer is the object storage. Again, collaboration and global distribution of content. We now have customers who are creating and distributing objects at a scale which is just unprecedented. Uh, we have some very large scale customers in the web cloud telco space who are creating and ingesting north of a billion objects a month and who have deployments today which are in the tens of billions of objects. Again, very, very large-scale things. Um, now, what does a deployment look like for uh, the customers that we serve? Uh, so again, historically, DDN deployments were an element which is uh, an appliance which serves blocks and serves files tying with a capacity component. Uh, we have some extremely exciting technology called IME, Infinite Memory Engine, which uh, I invite all of you to come to the DDN booth and take a look at. We believe this is a revolutionary technology for the HPC community. In essence, what it does is it delivers a means to accelerate applications in a very, very significant way. I mean, we have seen performance gains that are two to three orders of magnitude beyond what customers are achieving today. 
The other thing it does, uh, which we feel is extremely important, is the ability to extend the life of SSDs. I mean, there are lots of concerns about, well, how reliable are SSDs? And SSDs in the context of HPC, what is the lifespan of them? Well, with the IME technology, we have created the means to significantly extend the life of SSD technology. So that's typical data center and the various pieces of DDN technology that are enablers to it. Now, if you take that, one step beyond what ends up happening is you still have the data center element with IME being the acceleration of applications and extending the life of SSDs tying into the appliance. But then there is uh, our WAS technology which enables this really high performance layer to tie into a very, very cost effective live archive layer. Now why is live archive important? Because for many applications, being able to layer analytics and being able to do a lot more processing with the vast amount of data that organizations have collected is giving them the means to be more competitive if it's enterprise customers, to do more and better science if it's academia, and get more out of their IT infrastructure and their IT budget. And then take that tied into a tape, tape archive layer. So do optimization in performance, capacity that is live and tape archive, and then tie into the cloud. We're finding that many of our customers today are using a public cloud layer and they're trying to optimize their workflows between private clouds within their own organizations and the public cloud. So we've developed a bridge from our WAS technology into the public cloud which gives our customers the ability to do optimization not just within their four walls, but also into the public cloud. And then in order to really manage that, you need some sophisticated policy manager capabilities, uh, which we will be announcing throughout 2014 and layering that with the IROTS capabilities, which most of you probably know about. Um, and then one layer beyond that is you take the same thing and you now distribute it. You say, okay, I have my performance piece, which has IME, application acceleration, extension of life of SSDs, and I'm going to populate it across a number of data centers. So that one data center in the previous slides is becoming many data centers. Same thing on the live archive piece, so multiple data centers or multiple locations. You still have the public cloud element, you have the tape archive, and now the goal becomes how do I optimally manage my end-to-end -end big data or HPC lifecycle with the various building blocks that are available. So it's performance optimization, but performance optimization in a complex way. Again, looking at bandwidth, looking at IOPS, but distributed. It's tying that into a capacity tier and having the capacity tier be cost optimized so that I can extract some of the huge amounts of data that are sitting in many, many organizations, tape archives, tape libraries, and I can bring that in a cost effective way into the mix. It's tying into the public cloud and then it's creating a distributed environment with multiple private cloud locations. So that's what we're doing as a company. This is a problem that we're solving. We're already doing that, by the way, for a number of very large web cloud telco organizations. I mean, I, I used to think that it would be impossible for any type of industry or market to achieve the same types of requirements in scale, wh whatever the metric for scale is, outside of the HPC community. Well, today we're seeing increasingly in the web cloud space scale that extends beyond what we're doing here in HPC. And so whereas innovation always came just from HPC to achieve very large scale, today it's coming from a combination of HPC and Exascale at the very high end and web cloud and telcos on the other side of it. And it's bringing these two worlds together which I think is creating a framework of innovation which will be extremely beneficial to our HPC community, which we all live and breathe in. So with that, I will turn it over to Robert, who will get into the interesting technical details of what's in the DDN portfolio and what will be coming out from DDN in 2014 and beyond.